What's going on, everybody? My name is Bobby Della Rocco. I'm an audio engineer over at Sweetwater Studios, but today we're going to talk about sampling, specifically how to take this finger piano and turn it into a contact instrument. So we can go from this to playing it like this. We're going to go over how to clean up the audio, some basic processing, and then programming the actual contact instrument itself. So let's get into it. All right, so we just recorded all of our samples. They're all within one giant audio file inside of Pro Tools right now. So we gotta go and chop this all up. We're gonna go for the best sounding samples. Uh, we're gonna choose two from every single key. So going through with the recording process, the first round, what I did, I just played it with my finger. Second round, grabbed a pick, give it a little bit more a little, a little bit more of a percussive element to it. Uh, that way I can use the, the pick one at a higher velocity on the keyboard. So let's dive in and start chopping these up, okay? So a huge help during the editing process is going to be this button right up here, which is tab to transients. This is gonna allow the playhead to snap directly to the start of the sound whenever I press tab, like so. Now I can separate and Remove what's going on before that. So we're left with the start of the sound. And I think I like that one. So when it comes to editing each individual sample, like I said, you're going to want to have it start right at the very top of the transient. I'll add a fade in later, but I will add a fade out right now. I'll manually fade all of these out. Something that doesn't go on for too long, but just long enough to where you, when you hit the key, it's going to play back for you. You're going to get the sound. It's not going to feel chopped off, but it's also not going to drag on forever. So we're going to move on to D now. Didn't like that one. Clearly didn't like that one. Usually the last one of each hit is going to be the one that I'm going to like. I kind of made sure to make a mental note of that as I was going through. We'll chop that off there. There we go. So I'm going to go in, chop up the rest of these, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into the editing and fine tuning of each sample here in just a minute. There we go. F. That was a good one. I made know that that was a good one, huh? Cool. I like that. Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good one. So I've gone through and I've edited all the samples. I've got 10 at a lower velocity, 10 at a higher velocity. I've also kept a little bit of like ambient noise. That way we can use that to clean up the sounds later. We're gonna do that by using Isotope uh, Spectral Denoise. Now this plugin's great because it's got this learn feature right here. When that is activated, it will learn the profile of a noise and then remove that specific noise from your sounds. I'm gonna go through all these and just render these out. Now I did add small fades at the very, very beginning as well, just about five millisecond ones, just so it's not starting in the middle of a uh, waveform. So I'm gonna go through and denoise these. I'm gonna do one individually. I'll also go back through in a moment and rename all these. If you wanna to listen to what they sound like, here's the before. Let's render that out. It's a bit quieter. So now that, that amount of noise may not seem like much, but when you're re-triggering a sample over and over again, you get very, very accustomed to it, and it can drive you insane. So denoising is going to be pretty essential. And there we go. All of these are denoised. And now we're almost ready to start plugging these into our contact library. The one last thing we're going to have to do now is make sure these are all in tune. We are going to do this by using Melodyne. 
So we'll throw an instance of Melodyne on here. Activate it. And we'll transfer everything in. Fun, isn't it? All right, we've got our samples loaded into Melodyne. So one thing we're going to want to check is to make sure that Melodyne did not track this in as a, as a polyphonic instrument. Now, yes, you could play this as multiple notes at, at the same time. For, the, for this purpose, though, we, we are just playing individual ones. And every now and again, Melodyne may end up reading that as um, the overtones as individual notes. So go through, make sure that it's set to a uh, melodic or that it was tracking in as a monophonic instrument. All right, so now we're going to go into Melodyne and we're going to tighten up the tuning a little bit on these. We'll do this, make sure we've got our pitch tool on. And we'll just double click. That'll lock them to the center of the uh, note. This one, as you can see, <laughs> tracked a little bit sharp. Awesome. Now I've got these all set in here. So I'm just going to go through and then commit each of the audio files. So we've got all of our samples chopped up, in tune, and denoised. So we can take these samples, export them out of Pro Tools, and import them into a new instance of Contact. So all of our samples have been exported. I've got them in a folder right here. And I've got a brand new instance of a contact open. So if we double click in this region, we open up a brand new instrument. We'll open up the edit mode by clicking on this wrench up here. We'll go into the mapping editor. This is where we'll be doing a lot of the programming. So let's start with um, C1 low velocity. I'll actually drag this to C2. For me, that's just where it's more comfortable to play on this keyboard. And there we have it. We've started the sample. Right now, it's spanning just a single note. We can extend that out. You can see that it, right now it is reactive at every single velocity. But this one, we recorded it to be a low velocity one. That was the one that, that I just used my finger rather than using the pick. So if we come up here to the top of that region, we can drag this down. And I'm going to drag this down to 64. So that's the, about the midway point. And then for this, I just want this to span only two notes. I want it to span C. And C sharp. With sampling and using a sampler instrument, we're able to get notes that we couldn't achieve before with this instrument. Because typically, this is tuned to, to a C major scale, where you go from C to then D. Now we're able to hit those notes in between, which is great, especially if you want to work in something outside of C, such as C sharp or F or a whole host of other keys. So let's also grab our C1 high velocity. We can drag that to the same spot. Once again, we'll have it span two keys. And this time, we'll only have it be reactive at velocity 65 or above. So now you can hear, if I play a C softly, it'll trigger the lower velocity sample. If I play it harder, it triggers that higher velocity sample. So now let's go through, program the rest of these, and we'll have ourselves a playable instrument. And there we go. Now we've got a playable instrument. So as you can see, these regions here at the high and low end of the key ranges, I've expanded those out. That way I can play a few more notes lower and a few more notes higher. So now let's dive into some signal processing. For this kind of a sound, I typically like something that's a bit more, I like a bit of ambience, I like a bit of delay. So let's uh, dive in and see what we can do with that. So we'll do some insert effects. I know I like saturation. So we'll go to stomps, saturation. it gives it a bit more grit. I also like delay and reverb before our saturator, because I want the saturator to help bring out that reverb a little bit more. So we have a plate reverb. And let's grab a delay. I'm 
also going to throw on Native Instruments Transient Master. And I'm just going to have it tame down the attack just a hair. <laughs> There we go. We've got ourselves a fully customized contact instrument that we made from scratch using some pretty basic processing and a finger piano. Mm -hmm. 